Painting out glare from glasses might work in still frames. However, in longer video sequences, you won't only spend a lot of time, but might also fail. In this After Effects tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I removed the reflections from glasses in this specific footage. Ask yourself, why the heck is Michael Ponch in Berlin? The answer is simple, just to have a nice intro for my next tutorial. Let's jump right into After Effects. I told my client that the best way to remove reflections on glasses was to reshoot the video, but that was not an option for them. Besides, time and budget were tight. So I had to find a way to edit at least about 400 frames within a few hours. Luckily, the client required the talking head video to be shown only on social media. So it didn't have to be pixel perfect. Just good enough that the viewer wasn't distracted by anything looking off at first glance. By that time, I didn't promise anything to my client. But I was very optimistic because the speaker first didn't turn his head meaning his both eyes were always oriented towards the viewer and the left eye was covered by the reflection only marginally. By the way, I pixelated his face for obvious reasons. First, I gave Content Aware Fill a chance. Before I applied it, I keyed out the green reflections with the key light effect and expanded the resulting holes with a simple choker. Then I looked for one of the frames that was mostly tainted by the reflections and clicked on Create Reference Image, which automatically opened Photoshop. With the help of other screenshots of the footage I exported before, I made the reflections vanish from the image. Happy with the result, I saved the file, went back to After Effects and clicked on Generate Fill Layer. It took a while to analyze the image and generate the fill layer, but as you can see, the weight was not worth it. In the meantime, I tried it in Epsynth, which gave me a slightly better result, but not a good enough one. I deleted the fill layer, but kept the keyed footage, speculating that it could be useful later. Next try. I applied Mocha AE to the video layer and wanted to track the right lens. But the X-Spline reacted to the movements of the eye and the reflection, making it warp in an unwanted way. So I traced the lens, the inner frame, again. And with the x spline to layer tool selected, I also traced the outer frame. Having this part of the frame isolated, the tracker ignored the eye and the reflection. Once in a while, I stopped the tracking process to readjust the splines, especially the inner one, having in mind that I could later use it to mask things. Again. It's important that the second spline is not in a separate layer to make it track properly. So use the Add Xpline to Layer tool and not the Draw a new Xpline layer tool. The reason why I tracked the right side of the frame was because I wanted to stabilize it. In preparation for it, I revealed the planar surface with this button and clicked on this button next to it to expand the planar surface to fit the dimensions of the footage. This had to be done exactly at the time where I created the reference frame. After saving the Mocha AE project, I clicked on Create Track Data that created position keyframes for its parameters, representing the corners of my composition. Then I applied a CC Power Pin effect to the same layer. I revealed CC Power Pin's properties and expression pick whipped top left to Mocha AE's top left top right to Mocha AE's top right and so on. Finally, I checked invert. And all these steps made the right part of the glasses tick to the same position, counteracting the head's movement. This way, I could easily cover the reflection by masking the right eye in the reflection-free reference frame that I placed above the locked footage. To restore the original head movement, I copied Mocha AE and CC Power Pin from the video layer and pre-composed the footage and the reference frame. I moved the playhead to frame 0 and pasted the effects to the pre-comp. This had to be done at frame 0 to paste the keyframes properly. Then I checked on stretch and the right eye got perfectly tracked. By the way, 
This is one of my favorite techniques I already used in many of my tutorials. In the meantime, I applied the same procedure to the left eye by tracking it, stabilizing it with CC power pin, covering the tainted eye with a masked reference frame, copying both effects before pre-composing the two layers, and reversing the stabilization by pasting the effects at frame 0 and checking on stretch. Now having two separate pre-coms for the left and the right eye, I put the original footage to the very bottom to fill the gaps caused by the distortions. I masked both pre-coms around the left and the right eye to see them combined. The reflections completely vanished, but without the eye blinks and the parallax, it looked like funny party glasses. I had to restore the original eyes, but without the reflections. In the left eye pre-comp, I only masked the parts of the retouched frame, just enough to cover the reflection. Then I manually tracked the mask path to the reflections. By applying the lens mask I created from my previous tracking to the video and putting it on top, I made sure that the reference frame didn't overlap with the frame. And to further restrict the cover of the glare, I used the keyed footage from my first attempt as a track mat for it. A little tweak of the brightness with the curves effect and the left eye was perfect for me. As the left eye was stabilized anyway, I dragged it into the right eye composition, masked it, placed it above the right eye, feathered the mask and adjusted the brightness. And also here, I put the masked video above and the result looked okay with the blinking eyes and the parallax. But the only thing that looked weird was that the eyes were parallel and not symmetrical to each other when closed. I couldn't just set the X scale to negative because it would have made the shadows look wrong. The solution was simple. I applied a liquify effect to the left eye pre-comp. With the warp tool selected, I distorted the eye to closely match the original eye, always comparing it with the initial footage. I animated the distortion percentage so that the warp only fully affected the eye when closed. There were 17 further eye blinks that needed to be fixed in that 15 seconds of footage. Maybe it was fiddly, but it didn't take that long. And finally, I added an adjustment layer on top of everything, applied a lumetry effect to it, and eliminated everything green to reduce the remnants of the reflections. This way, I could make it less obvious to the viewer that there were reflections before. And I got a decent result. When you look at it closely, you would definitely see that it was edited, but only if you know it. At least, my client was happy with it, and most of my client's audience would see it on a small screen anyway. And that's it, guys. The real reason why I'm here in Berlin is that I met a score of very creative people at a video summit organized by the German Adobe team, a really great event, and I had the honor of meeting Flowmotion, a fellow After Effects YouTuber with whom I had a great exchange with. Go ahead and check him out. I hope you liked this tutorial. See you next time. And by the way, this is what I got. <laughs>